News at Bedtime. This is the News at Bedtime with me, John Tweedledum. And me, Jim Tweedledee. Hello, stories this bedtime. The celebrity wedding of the year. I'll be talking to the owl and the pussycat. And coming up, the jumbly problem. We look at the controversial issue of the jumbly asylum seekers who arrived in a sieve. They come over here in their leaky sieves and then expect us to foot the bill. I mean, I've got nothing against them. Uh, Some of my best friends are jumblies. More on the jumblies later, but first... We're going over to Miri Miri, our contrary correspondent, who's got news of an egg on a wall. No, I haven't, Jim. The egg was on the wall, but now he's not anymore. So what's the situation there, Miri Miri? It's chaos, Jim, but what we're hearing is that the egg, a Mr Dumpty, was sitting on the wall when he somehow fell off. Are you saying it was suicide? Yes, I'm not. Frankly, it's too early to speculate, Jim, but the report suggests that Mr Dumpty had been feeling depressed recently, possibly because he'd been diagnosed as containing salmonella. As I say, it's too early to speculate, but it was almost definitely a suicide attempt. Unless it was murder. Or an accident. And what's happening now? Well, Jim, it's not a pretty sight. There are bits of shell all over the pavement, and despite their best efforts, the emergency services have failed to put Mr Dumpty together again. I'm speaking now to one of the King's horses and King's men... You didn't arrive very quickly, did you? (laughs) So you say. Can I bring in one of the King's men now? Sergeant, if your response time had been faster, could Mr Dumpty have been saved? I I, I think that question is very offensive to the very hard-working and professional horses and men in a service which, frankly, has been the victim of a series of savage cutbacks. If we were properly resourced, then we could possibly have prevented this egg tragedy. So you're saying it's all your fault? No, what I'm saying... Sorry, I'm going to have to cut you off there. That's all we've got time for. This is me, Mary Mary, at the wall for the news at bedtime. Back to the studio. Yes, Mary Mary there with literally breaking news. Very amusing, Jim. And we will have more on that extraordinary story later. Just stop it and get on with the programme. So you don't like my yolks? Oh, you just hit me with a rattle. Now, that's funny. And now over to Dilly Dilly with the shipping forecast. Ow! Here's the shipping forecast at 2300 hours. Viking, Cromarty, Dogger, Bite, Humber, Fastnet, Rockall. You will see three ships come sailing by, come sailing by, come sailing by. You'll see three ships come sailing by on New Year's Day in the morning. And that's the shipping forecast. That's typical. You wait ages for a ship on New Year's Day in the morning, and then three come along at once. (laughs) Very funny, Jim. Now, celebrity weddings are making the headlines again, and they're getting more and more ridiculous. We've had Aladdin and the Emperor's Daughter. We've had Beauty and the Beast. And now, to top it all, we've had the Owl and the Pussycat, who join me in the studio. All right. Hello. I mean, let's be honest, it's getting a bit silly, isn't it? Traditionists are saying that as an owl marrying a pussycat, you're taking the institution of marriage and making a nonsense of it. Owl. Our wedding was a very special day which we will remember forever. So you should, given that you went all the way to the land where the bong trees grow and hired a turkey to do the service. It's ludicrous, isn't it, pussycat? It was a beautiful moving and spiritual service. A spiritual service involving a pig? That pig performed the best man duties very capably. He didn't lose the ring. Well, he couldn't, could he, because it was stuck through the end of his piggy wig nose. I don't want to ruffle any feathers here, but admit it, this was just a publicity stunt. You even sell the pictures to Hello Boys and Girls magazine. I think you're being very negative about what was a very magical event. Yeah, what's your problem, fat boy? Well, uh, what I think John's trying to say is that a, a, a wedding reception that involves dining on mince and slices of quince could easily be misinterpreted as tacky C-list celebrity excess. It was well classy. We had a pea green boat and everything. All I know is that we love each other. Hmm? And we'll be together forever. And the day. Very moving. In fact, I can feel my stomach moving. So let's bring in our other celebrity couple who got married in a blaze of publicity last year, The Dish and the Spoon. It didn't turn out so well for you, did it, Spoon? There's too much pressure on us right from the start. We were breaking all sorts of taboos, you know. Whether you're a crockery or cutlery shouldn't be an issue nowadays. But, you know, the media just won't leave it alone. Mm, Dish, as I understand it, you've now split up. Me and the Spoon still stay good friends for the sake of the teaspoons. And Spoon, you're now living with a toaster, aren't you? You keep popping up in the papers. I made it clear that I'm not prepared to discuss my private life. Let's bring the dish back in. 
Do you have any advice for the owl and the pussycat? The owl is very attractive. I mean... Are you looking at my bed? Look, pussycat, you don't own me. Calm down, everyone. We don't want to fight. Back off, love. What am I talking about? Of course we do. Carry on, spoon. All I've got to say to the pussycat is, I hope you signed a prenup, love. Keep it out of it, you stainless steel bastard. (coughs) Listen, owl, I want half the pea green boat and all the honey and money wrapped up in the five pound note. In your dreams, Moggy. Owls, you're all the same. You can't say that. that. So, time for the headlines with Brian, Pinky and Perkins. Here are the headlines with me, Brian, Pinky and Perkins. The marriage of the owl and the pussycat is officially over and in an exclusive interview for this programme, the pussycat said, Owls, they're all the same. The announcement of the official end of their marriage was made on this programme by me, Brian, Pinky and Perkins, just now. And those are the headlines. Thank you, Brian. And with the time coming up to Once Upon a Time... It's over to Mary Mary, our contrary correspondent, with the latest on the Humpty Dumpty story. It's not a story, Jim. It's a scandal, and one they are already calling Dumpty Gate, because the extraordinary development here is that the wall in question has a terrible history of similar disasters. Only last week, ten green bottles accidentally fell to their doom. Ten green bottles? Yes, ten green bottles were standing on the wall, then one green bottle accidentally fell, leaving nine green bottles. Nine green bottles? Nine green bottles standing on the wall, then another green bottle accidentally fell, leaving eight green bottles I think we'll standing. come back to you, Mary Mary, in just a wee minute. Meanwhile, it's time for Thought for the Day with Peter Rabbi. Um, well... Talking of walls reminds me that when I was a little bunny, I can remember sitting in a walled garden, eating carrots, and thinking to myself how delicious these carrots were, when all of a sudden an angry farmer McGregor appeared with a large shotgun and tried to blow my head off. I had to run away very fast and leave my little blue jacket behind. Then, funnily enough... (laughs) The shot ricocheted off the wall and hit Squirrel Nutkin square in the face, splattering his brains all over the vegetable patch. So walls can be dangerous things. And you know, I am still in mourning for that little blue jacket. (laughs) Peter Rabbi giving us all something to think about there. And we're getting reports coming in of a major traffic incident in the Banbury area. A cock horse being ridden to Banbury Cross is causing all sorts of problems for travellers. There are tailbacks building up behind a lady on a white horse. Uh, Listeners are texting in to say that she has rings on her fingers and bells on her toes. Police are warning that this will lead to music wherever she goes and are therefore asking the public to stay at home unless their journey is absolutely necessary. And now back to Mary Mary at the wall with the latest on the Dumpty Green Bottlegate fiasco. And then one green bottle accidentally fell, leaving no green bottles standing on the wall. No green bottles standing on the wall? No green bottles standing on the wall. So what are the implications of all this, Mary Mary? Members of the egg community are now asking why the wall wasn't demolished following the earlier bottle incident, and they're saying, and I quote, this wall was an accident waiting to happen. Some leading eggs are even calling for a total ban on all walls over a height of three inches, but as you can probably hear, Jim, pro-wall groups are calling this an assault on their basic right to construct brick-based partitions. I'm joined now by a spokesman for pro-wall pressure groups Save the Wall. So, Bob, the builder, what do you want? Walls. When do you want them? Ooh, now you're asking. Uh, As soon as we finish our current job, probably Friday, might be next week. Excuse us, love. So, what do we want? Walls! When do we want them? With the situation getting out of control, it's back to you in the studio, Jim. Thanks, Mary Mary, for trying to unscramble a potentially explosive story. Ow! You asked for it. Now, looking forward, tomorrow evening on Radio 40 Winks sees the start of a new panel game. Name that dwarf. The rules are very simple. Two teams battle it out to win the Queen's first-born child. On my right, the lovely Miller's daughter, who became Queen by spinning flax into gold. Hello. Pitting her wits against the malevolent and cruel dwarf. Hello. So, let's play Name That Dwarf. Brian. No. Oh. Colin. Hmm? 
No. <gasps> oh, Balthazar? Casper? Longshanks? Not even close. <laughs> <laughs> William Trembletoe? A oh, wee Willy Winky? Ant? Deck? Now, that's just silly. <laughs> so, tune in tomorrow at 6.30 for more name-guessing fun on Name That More. <laughs> More award-winning quality broadcasting there. And with the time coming up to a long time ago, we turn to the continuing controversy surrounding the jumbly asylum seekers who arrived on these shores in their sieve. With me in the studio is the head of the pressure group Nursery Land for Nursery Landers, Mr Peter Piper, and jumbly community spokesman Mr Tim Ballow. Peter Piper, what exactly is your objection? The jumblies came over here from... The lands where the jumblies live, and if we allow them to stay, then it's going to be the thin end of the wedge. We are going to be swamped by sieve born jumblies taking all our jobs. Isn't that right, Mr. Ballow? Peter Piper used to be employed as a pickled pepper picker, but has since lost his job due to cheap jumbly labour coming in and offering to pick the peck of pickled peppers for a paltry pittance. We are doing essential jobs that the native workforce are unwilling to do, and thus providing essential services and stimulating the economy. So what you are saying is, you're not preventing Peter Piper picking pecks of pickled peppers, but positively promoting peck of pickled pepper picking productivity. Peter Piper... It's not just about cheap labour, there's also the cultural problems. Oh, here we go. No, let him finish, you've had your say. The jumblies have their own customs, and they don't make any attempt to interfere great with the local community. Nonsense. They come over here with their rice and cranberry tarts and hives of silvery bees. Some of them have jackdaws and monkeys with lollipop paws. That's not what we do over here. Yes, you see, now we're getting to the heart of Mr Piper's real objection, which is not economic or socio-cultural, but simply racism. That is an outrageous allegation, and it's not... It comes down to colour. You don't like the fact that our heads are green and our hands are blue. Are they? I hadn't noticed. Peter Piper, Tim Ballow, we're going to have to leave it there. Clearly the jumbly issue is here to stay, much like the jumblies. John. Thanks, Jim. Any worries that a jumbly might come over here and take your job? <laughs> no, I don't think there's any danger of that. News at bedtime doesn't pay enough. <laughs> and of course the jumblies' noses are green rather than red, like yours. <laughs> Ow! The time is just coming up to time for a time check. The time is one more story and you've got to go to sleep. John. That rattle really hurt. And joining me in the studio to discuss what's being called the Green Bottle Dumpty Egg Wall Gate catastrophe is government spokesman Lord Pinocchio. Lord Pinocchio, Green Bottle Dumpty Egg Wall Gate has raised major health and safety issues for your administration. Are you taking it seriously? Very seriously. Is your nose all right? That's a private matter, John. What we in the government are proposing is a full public inquiry to look at all the issues and deliver a comprehensive report. But some people are saying that this is just going to be a whitewash, which won't look at any of the issues at all. Well, uh, that's the sort of anti-government cynicism that we've come to expect from the nursery land media. Be careful with that nose, you could have someone's eye out. So who exactly have you appointed to run the inquiry? An independent, objective and highly regarded panel of mice. There were three of them, and I can't help noticing that they're blind. I'm afraid I, I can't comment on that. Lord Pinocchio, is it fair to say that in this matter you're just a puppet? No, I'm a real politician. Thank you, Lord Pinocchio. Thank you, John. Just time to look at tomorrow's papers. The Nursery Times leads with Ladybird, Ladybird in Arson Probe. The Daily Fairygraph has DNA breakthrough, little girls made of sugar and spice. The Daily Mirror Mirror on the wall goes for... I defied hunting band, says Baby Bunting Dad. And the Twinkle Twinkle Daily Star has free Lady Godiva calendar featuring naked pictures of the Coventry glamour model in various poses on her horse. No surprises there. So this is me, Jim Tweedledee, saying good night. And me, John Tweedledum, saying and me, John Tweedledum. Join us next time for another edition of News at Bedtime and in the meantime, live happily ever after. Good night. Ow! The News at Bedtime starred Jack D, Peter Capaldi, Lewis MacLeod, Alex McQueen, Lucy Montgomery, Vicky Pepperdine, Dan Tetzel and Brian Perkins. It was written by Ian Hislop and Nick Newman and produced by Simon Nichols. A quarter to eleven next Thursday night, it's halfway through the first episode in the new series of News Jack. Brilliant, but even better if you listen from half ten. Hello. You're listening to The Comedy Club. Is that right? Hello. Hello, Rob. Welcome to the Comedy Club. 
This is Bob Simfield. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be here. Previously, uh, we were talking about um, Bob Monkhouse, but let's move on from Bob Hope and Bob Monkhouse. Talk about Bob Simfield. Oh, all right. Yes, there is. <laughs> there is. It's almost a thread because yeah. you're a Robert. Yes. I mean, ultimately, Robs and Bobs are the funniest. What can I say? I think so. Yeah. Well, you're carrying on the tradition. You <laughs> I'd like to think so. Yeah. Do you think of yourself as having one job or many? Because you've got.